Oh boy, we got more trailers coming out. Woo! Better buy up those spec books. Go, go, go. Hit buy, buy, buy it now on eBay. Or don't. You wouldn't be the only one because nobody's buying anything right now. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swaggle Haas. And in this video, we need to talk about the new Madam Web trailer that just came out, the new What If Season 2 trailer that just came out, and for good measure, we can also talk about how we're now on the other end of the Marvel's weekend for a movie that we all know at this point bombed. I couldn't tell you if the movie was good because I didn't see it, and I'm not alone in that. Nobody saw it, as the ticket sales indicate. But I wanted to do a little video, talk about all this secondary market happenings, and, you know, start to ask ourselves a question of, are these movies now at a place where they're actually hurting our comics more than they are helping them? Well, as you guys know, the answer to that is obviously yes. But, of course, before I get into it, if you guys could like, comment, subscribe, I appreciate it. Help support the channel, doing those things. But let's get into this video here today. Now, we got to start with the Marvels here. Everybody is talking about the Marvels. Everywhere you go on YouTube, you see Brie Larson and every single thumbnail out there. I'm not going to do the whole thing where we, you know, dump on this movie and talk about the problems with the MCU. I've already kind of expressed my feelings of what I think is ultimately wrong with it. But I realize my feelings is way too nuanced and in the weeds. So I'm just going to do what everyone else is doing and just say, fix it. You know, we got some Keenan out here, SNL, fix it. But that said, let's talk about this here today because, you know, one of the big things on this channel I've always sort of discussed is this idea of, you know, when we get to Captain Marvel 2, and this, of course, is like two years ago, could we ever revisit some of the highs that some of these comic book values hit the first time around in 2018 when the movie initially came out? You know, that would sort of be the canary in the coal mine or the ultimate test and maybe lay the foundation or the groundwork for can books like Marvel Special Edition uh, 15 ever recover to its peak prices? Could Eternals number one ever recover to its peak prices? Now, as I'm sure you guys know, and as we've already established here on the channel, macroeconomic policies have a lot more to do with the values of comic books than the pop culture aspect, although the pop culture aspect does play a little bit of a role. But let's take a look at this here together. Marvel Superheroes number 13, First Appearance of Carol Danvers. Now, this is a book that absolutely exploded the very first time that we had the Captain Marvel movie when everything was going bananas. Let's focus in on the 7-5 grade. I already had it open, but, you know, based on the census of this book, this one gives us a larger sample size, and I think it's more clear of a picture to give us a general state of Captain Marvel and the book. But as you guys can see, this book has had a crazy life cycle. Back in 2014, when the movie was initially uh, announced, this had a big spike up, then a big pullback in anticipation of the movie, and then all the way in 2018, goes to a $1,500 book at the 7.5 grade when starting back in 2014, it was a $183 book. So 15X has a massive crash after the movie, some ups and downs, you know, a little bit of 2021 spike. And now where it sits all the way back down to the $197 range. I mean, look at the value range here in 2023, the highs 500, the lows 180. I mean, you have to go all the way back to 2017 to see the highs being 489. But even back then, the low for this book was only 300. The floor value was actually better than that of what it is currently in 2023, all the way back then. You have to go all the way back to 2014 when this book initially hit the map where you see highs of 675 and then lows of 183. And so ultimately to me, it's one of those things where I have to sort of ask, like, has this Captain Marvel being in pop culture actually hurt the value of this book? Has it actually made it worse? Because where it sits today, you know, especially if you consider inflation, you know, over these last 10 years, it is lower than where it was when we started. I mean, maybe if we never actually had a Captain Marvel movie, maybe the like organic nature of this book would have been able to kind of slowly but surely gone up over time. Maybe people would have just actually appreciated having it in their collection, not based on speculation, you know? Similar to Ms. Marvel number one right here, of course, is the first time when 
Captain Marvel or Carol Danvers, excuse me, becomes Ms. Marvel. And then of course there's the, when she becomes Captain Marvel, but similar journey with this book right here, where, where it sits today is essentially where it was all the way back in 2013. And if anything, now if you actually own this book, it comes with sort of the taint that is the MCU and Captain Marvel and Brie Larson and all that sort of thing. And it actually is sort of worse to own this book today, you know, where we see the lows here in 2023 are 732, where the highs were 750 in 2013. And then in 2014, again, the lows, 721. So the low of today is the same as the low of 2014. That's a terrible return on your investment. You've had this book for nine years and it stayed flat. And you have to sort of wonder, like maybe, you know, if you rewind the clock all the way back here, at least in 2003, it started at 100 to 75 dollars, and then up to 2012, it was 280 to 210. You know, 2013, 750 to 526. So this book actually performed better as far as a return on investment. You know, in the years in which we had no Captain Marvel or Ms. Marvel or whatever the case is, and then as soon as they bring her into the cinematic universe. Well, now it's more volatile and essentially it's even worse off than it ever was from when it started. Now quickly here, let's just take a look at Monica Rambeau and Kamala Khan's books just to kind of nail this point home before we move on to the Madam Web stuff. Uh, again, Amazing Spider-Man Annual number 16, first appearance of Captain Marvel, Monica Rambeau. Another book that kind of was maybe a little bit flat, but slowly but surely, maybe a little bit ups here and there, you know, in 2018 had a little bit of a lift. And then obviously got the WandaVision COVID crazy boom and then has had a you know steep decline ever since to where it sells now, you know, with the low being 288. You got to go all the way back to, you know, essentially around 2019, 2020, when that was more normal for this book. Maybe this book has performed a little bit better because it's a Spider-Man book. So, you know, people still want to have this in their collection just based on the amazing Spider-Man factor. But it definitely seems like it has stalled the book's potential with what is currently going on in the movies and the pop culture, similar to Kamala Khan, Ms. Marvel here. You know, all new Marvel Now, point one, number one. I mean, this was always going to be a book that sort of had an uphill battle, uh, you know, being that it's a modern book, a lot more on the census, there's a lot of competing things. I mean, you have the cameo appearances, you have the variants, things like that. But, you know, it had a massive spike up in 2021, but where the book sits today is essentially at the same price of where this book was selling in 2018, which again, probably, you know, had a little bit of a spike because once the Captain Marvel movie came out, everybody was thinking, oh, maybe they'll introduce Kamala Khan at that point. But again, we're at that point now where you have to wonder if these movies are really starting to hurt the values of our comic books. And um, I, I think if you are somebody who is a Morbius fan or you're somebody who's a Moon Knight fan or you're somebody who maybe is even a She-Hulk fan, you're definitely typing on your keyboard on the comment section right now. Absolutely. These things are hurting the values of my favorite character and my favorite comic book. And yeah, we're sort of at this point now where you have a trailer like this come out. I don't know how you guys felt about the trailer. To me, it just felt like, here we go again, you know, another uh, Sony spider type of movie. And uh, is this going to have any effect on the secondary market? Well, we did see some Amazing Spider-Man 210 sell, of course, first appearance of Madam Web, but nothing necessarily above any of the values that we had before. You know, I think we had a couple nine sixes sell. Here you have a slash price of 235. So let's call it 210 or something like that. Earlier than that, you had a, another slash price uh, earlier in the day of slash price of 280. Let's call it 250. But, you know, before the trailer came out here on November 11th, you had a 9.6 sell for 250. So really, it didn't go anywhere. Uh, you had a 9.6 uh, in October uh, sell at auction for 203. So, you know, it's still kind of roughly the same price for this book, uh, generally speaking, across the board. But you sort of have to wonder, I mean, maybe this book would be performing generally better if there was no cultural touch point to it. You know, similar with Marvel Superheroes Secret Wars number seven, first Julia Carpenter, Spider-Woman. You know, we saw a couple sales here, but no more, you know, coming off the heels of this trailer than we would see on any other sort of normal day for this. And similar to Amazing Fantasy one, you know, Anya Corazon. I mean, maybe this book has been inflated for, through all the conversations and speculation of this character. But again, today this book is still a $25 book where it was a $25 book you know, a year ago and two years before that. And, you know, I guess outside of COVID 2021, when this thing was going crazy, you know, the price remains pretty stagnant in that way. But you have to sort of wonder, maybe the book would be doing better if people weren't sort of speculating on it and looking to flip it 
and it just sort of had that natural organic rise because people actually liked the character and just wanted to collect the book. You know, we actually had more holders and less paper-handed individuals. Similarly, we have What If Season 2 with the trailer here. Now, I actually was one of the people that really enjoyed What If. The first two episodes of the series was were not the best, so I think the, the show got off to a slow start, but I thought it ended really strong. I actually really, really enjoyed the What If uh, series, and I have a feeling that people are going to enjoy Season 2 as well. I don't think there's going to be too many viewers of the show, but I do think that this is going to uh, perform decently well, similar to that of like the Guardians Christmas special or Werewolf by Night. I think it'll have a smaller audience, but people will like it. But that said, as far as secondary market is concerned, what if number one? Zero sales. It's been a while since anyone has wanted this book. You got to go to before this trailer was released the day before where someone bought it for $20, which again is a far cry from where we were once upon a time when the spec market was going absolutely insane, absolutely crazy. And I think this is kind of where we have to kind of round out the video and talk about this idea of, you know, again, we're just sort of at a place where the macroeconomic policies are too big of a factor to have any sort of spec book be able to be elevated by some kind of pop cultural thing. And, you know, especially, you know, when we have all of the pop cultural stuff, you know, so damning to the perception of these books, well, that's going to hurt them even worse. So I, I again, I, I do this video as sort of an exercise so that we can sort of talk about the market and, you know, just talk some comic books together and see what's sort of going on. But, you know, we shouldn't really be surprised that there really is no movement in the market. That being said, though, I'm not here to say that spec is dead forever or that FOMO is dead forever. I think that there will be a time when there's more money in the system, when things are free flowing, where spec books do get hot once again. We're just not currently in that time. Uh, as I said at the beginning of this year, we were going into risk off environment and risk off environment meant things like golden age and blue chip keys and things like that. But eventually we will go back into a risk on environment and spec books, 4Xing, 5Xing, things like that are going to be a thing again. They will eventually become a thing again. And that's where a lot of people will be going because that's where the money is going to be in the market. And you know how these things operate. But that's all I got for this video. Here we are once again, 2023. Last few trailers I think we're getting for superhero content for a little while. Uh, definitely not a lot of movement for that. Of course, you know, with all the uh, uh, adjustments of the slates, we're not going to see another sort of superhero movie. Well, I guess we have Aquaman too, but let's be honest, that doesn't really count. Uh, we have to wait until Deadpool of next year uh, to where, you know, we might have secondary market move in tandem to whatever is going on in the culture. Uh, but right now, you know, nobody cares uh, and nobody is buying this stuff. And uh, those uh, forever Ms. Marvel 1 holders uh, are going to need to be holding a lot longer. Anyways, that's all I got for this video. What did you guys think of these new trailers that came out? What did you guys think of the Marvel's box office flop? Again, I wouldn't be able to tell you if it's good because I had no desire to see it because I had no need to see it because, I mean, we already know. I didn't need to see it to know that it wasn't going to be good. Anyways, that's all I got for this video. What do you guys think? Like, comment, subscribe. See you on the next one.